Hey guys, today I want to show you a table made from the most beautiful piece of wood that I have ever seen. But first, I want to announce the winner of the last video's giveaway, so congrats to Lindsay Alvarado for winning this handmade gold-plated purple heart pen. Now I want to start this video out by showing you the few features of this elm burl slice. On the one side, I had a heart shape at the center and a bear claw shaped crack, but there weren't that many features because the veins of the wood weren't very visible. On the other side, I didn't have the heart shape, but I did have two knots in the center, and the veins of the wood were much more visible and fitted perfectly with the knots from the burl sections. Now unfortunately, with this slice, I had a huge amount of sap wood to deal with. Some of it could even be scraped off, but the wood beneath it was too soft for its own good anyways, so I had to remove a lot of it, otherwise I wouldn't be able to apply the finish properly. So I started with a nylon wheel on an angle grinder, but I didn't really like the end result because it wasn't precise enough and removed too much material, so I switched to a chisel for the rough removal and then switched to a dremel with a high-tech dust collection attachment and the finishing touches were made with 240 grit mesh sandpaper that kept the texture alive basically. During the cleanup, I had to remove a knot because it would have floated over the epoxy and probably caused a few bits and pieces of wood to float underneath it, giving bad results after planing and sanding. Which was a shame, really, because it could have looked really nice. As you can see, the slice itself wasn't exactly straight, so I knew I had to remove a lot of material, hence the previous decision. Then I prepared some epoxy and did a first seal coat of the slice before pouring black epoxy. This is very important because if you don't do that, you end up having some black pigment seeping into the wood, creating bleeds in the wood and the color ends up looking terrible. Then I put silicone around the cracks to have the slice serve as a mold and flipped it over onto a flat plastic surface. Then I put silicone around the cracks of the opposite side and started pouring the black epoxy. Now I put in an excessive amount, knowing that the excess would be planed off anyways, and this time I used a brand new carbide flattening bit which stopped burning the wood and that changed everything. After flattening and making small corrections by adding epoxy where it was missing, I sanded down the table with my orbital sander. Another really great method I found was to mix black pigment with wood paste, which doesn't actually seep into the wood, so that's a really great crack filler that's faster than epoxy and gets your results as clean as epoxy for smaller cracks. This process had to be repeated multiple times just to make sure we had all the cracks. Now I had a bit of epoxy seep through on the sides so I had to fix that using my Dremel again and finished it again with 240 grit sandpaper. Then I moved on to the final sanding using the dual mode orbital sander and checking with a studio light if there were any defects which I corrected either using super glue for very thin cracks or a wood paste black pigment mixture just like before and this had to be done multiple times again. Then I went back to my childhood and created a flower using my compass to make the six hexagonally placed holes per my client's request as they wanted it for a cast iron table foot that they had lying around. I marked the holes using a punch and then cut them out using a drill with a chamfer bit attached. And once that was complete, I added metallic inserts to make it easier to assemble or disassemble. The final step was the finish and grain reveal, which looked absolutely fantastic on the bottom of the table already. So I was really eager to finish the rest. I then moved on to the sides first to keep the best for last, obviously, and did multiple layers of finish with sanding in between. On the top, there was every single type of feature that I could have hoped for and the slice looked incredible. Now I'm not gonna lie, after working with wood as beautiful as this, it's always a bit hard to hand the piece over to the clients because you know every unique feature and you keep telling yourself that you're never gonna find it anywhere else. And for my next video, this statement is a thousand times stronger and you will see why in a few weeks. So thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys quite soon, so don't forget to subscribe and have a great day.